Growing up in Hong Kong under British rule, I was raised in a modern family with deep traditional Chinese values. I was expected to study hard, speak fluent English, and be a good Chinese girl. But I was not expected to have high ambitions like going to college, developing a career, or becoming an independent, outspoken, free-thinking woman. However, I had a different expectation of myself for what I wanted to be. Ever since I was five years old, when my grandmother narrated my first bedtime story, I'd always love to imagine how an interesting story can play out visually. I'd laugh out loud over a really funny story and cry over a sad story, and sometimes wonder how a sad story might end well. The television set in our family room is always on and constantly pull me in like a magnet. In my junior year in high school, my aunt visiting from California said I should go to college in America and major in mass communications. Where did she get that idea? Well, I vaguely remember I told her how much I love to tell stories, and television speaks to me. In fact, I learned how to speak American English from watching shows like Happy Days, Welcome Back, Cotter, and even soap opera like The Young and the Restless. At age 15, motivated by a sense of adventure and a passion for storytelling on television, I took my aunt's advice and asked my parents for permission to go to America. My goal was to write and produce for television. That was my American dream. My parents knew little about America and had no desire to move overseas, but they loved and trusted me enough to let me figure out how to apply to come here on my own. My father's only request was that I stay within close range of his brothers in Detroit, Michigan. And I said, okay. Then I finished high school at the Cranbrook Schools in Michigan, earned an undergraduate degree in broadcast production management from Newhouse School of Communications at Syracuse University, and a graduate degree later on in East Asian Studies at Harvard. Well, I was lucky enough to get my first job out of college at WWOR, a local TV station in New York. I had already sent out 20 letters all over the country looking for work, got 19 rejections. Well, that offer came just in time, months before my practical training visa ran out. For the Hong Kong group, the painful process of identification will begin tomorrow. Well, four years later, I returned to Hong Kong to accept an incredible offer as an on-air reporter and anchor for the English channel at Hong Kong TVB News. Was among thousands of people who took to the streets today, and he urged the, the four-year reporting stint broadened my personal and professional horizons, taking me on assignment from the hinterlands of rural China and the hotbed of tensions in Beijing to the killing fields of Cambodia and the boat people crisis in Vietnam. Throughout my international journalism career, I've learned to listen and relate to individual stories of struggles and survival. Sometimes I go home at night and think about these stories, and it struck me that no matter where we come from or where we live, we share the same desire to be safe, strong, happy, and respected. You know, frankly, after running around the world as a journalist for many years, I felt a bit burnt out. So a very good friend at Harvard who was a law professor said, why don't you take a study break and apply to be a graduate student? And I said, okay. I applied and I got in as a graduate student at the East Asian Studies program at Harvard. After graduation, I began exploring a new career with a China focus, but American Network News beckoned. After a successful summer internship with CBS News in Tokyo, I was asked to join their international news assignment team in New York. As a foreign-born, non-American citizen with my family back in Hong Kong, I found that network job offer a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, an honor and a privilege. My first network job has polished my craft in television story writing and producing, and I proceeded with success in moving from CBS to Court TV, CNN, and NBC News. On the morning of September 11th, I covered the biggest story of the century for NBC News. Like many in New York waking up to the most devastating news of the day, I witnessed the terrorist attacks on the World Trade Towers just five blocks away from my home. 
I called Dateline NBC News right away, and I volunteered to head down to Ground Zero. Little did I know that I would be caught in a stampede following the fall of the South Tower, be injured and bloodied. I survived that day and joined countless other colleagues to produce the most horrific story of the year for days and weeks to come. But since that day, I've suffered survivor guilt and post-traumatic stress disorder that very few friends would know. I was afraid to show pain because I was afraid to expose my vulnerabilities. The hardest part of the 9-11 experience was sharing my sense of shock and outrage as an American citizen with my family back in Hong Kong. In 2000, just one year before the September 11th attack, I was sworn in as a U.S. citizen in Brooklyn, New York. You know, my parents never understood why I wanted to have the right to vote in America or to have the freedom to travel the world with an American passport. But that was my dream. After having crisscrossed the world as a journalist, I found America my new home. I spent the next 10 years producing for CNN, HBO, Good Morning America, and ABC News. Now I want to produce your stories, your personal experiences with China, your dreams and expectations, so that you too can have a platform to tell and share them the same way I was so fortunate to have.